This is the chapel in Merton College and we've come to see a sculpture. I think it's to represent like the bond between Mary and Jesus. I don't know. Like metal. 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 Yeah. I'm not sure how he made it, but to take a wild guess, I would have said he would have got a mould and maybe some metal and just pushed it into the shape he wanted. I don't have a clue how he made it, but if I were to guess how he made it, I'm pretty sure he would have used like a foam to get like the basic shape of the sculpture down and then you could slowly add to it, like adding the bits of metal and like, I don't know, using like a hammer, hitting it until it's formed a body. This sculpture is made by carving a block of wood. What? Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I wouldn't imagine that it was made by wood. I thought, at first, I thought it would have been made by metal because when you look like here, and you can see like a seam kind of a metal. My name's Simon Jones and I'm the chaplain here at Merton College in Oxford. I've been here for 16 years. So the sculpture came to the chapel in 2014. The college was founded in 1264, so in 2014 we were celebrating our 750th anniversary. Because um, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is one of the patrons of the chapel, um, we wanted to provide a focus for prayer within the chapel by putting an image of Mary, and we decided to put a contemporary image of Mary in the chapel and asked Peter Eugene Ball to produce a sculpture for us. Were you involved with the design of the sculpture, for example, the material it was made out of, or was the artist given free will? We chose Peter Eugene Ball as the artist um, because we knew what his statues are like. So he has statues in different churches all across, all across the country. I think what we liked about his style was that it's a contemporary style, um, but it draws on an ancient tradition. I am impressed because it must have taken him such a long time to find the shape that he wanted and then carve it and then cover it in metal and then paint it. When you see people come into the chapel, there are lots of things that attract their attention, um, but not least on the organ. Um, but what happens when people come through that door is often they look in this direction and see the statue um, and come over here. There is something about the statue which draws people to it. I think the significance of the sculpture is that it's a place where you can come and offer in prayer and express that by lighting a candle. I say he's a good artist as he's had to find a way to create a piece of art that fits into this space while still making it contemporary and making it able to please everyone in a way because there's going to be people that want it purely traditional and to fit in completely with all the other pieces of art and then there's going to be people that want it contemporary so to find a piece of art that does that I think he's done a very good job. This is the Western Library, it's just around the corner from the college and it's a lot more public and it's also got a sculpture. So this sculpture is more polished and it's more modern, just like this building, compared to the college that we were at a minute ago. This sculpture is older but it looks a lot more modern because it's more kind of abstract and polished. This sculpture suits this building because the style it's been created in has almost been made for a building like this, whereas the other place has been made to look aged so that it could fit in with the other art in that building.